Welcome everybody here to our next uh, webinar. A warm welcome in the name of JFD Bank as well. My name is Stefan Frodochowski, as always, for those webinars. And it's a pleasure for me to have you all here. It looks, once again, quite international, as I can see the names, or at least what I read out of the names. But anyhow, it's um, um, at least the names are international. Let's let's uh, uh, say it that way. But anyhow, it's really good to have you all here. Today is the 19th of September 2019, seven o'clock at least in Germany, wherever you are, you might have, of course, a different time. Today's topic is Renko charts. And honestly, the next sentence in my title is already everything which is really of matter here, a price-based change of perspective. Because that is what finally Renko charts uh, are, and uh, you will learn about those Renko charts. And it's it's a really quite cool thing because from my point of view, um, anything around technical analysis uh, with charts is much easier if you go for Renko charts. A lot of things become much more obvious and just by a different kind of uh, charting style. So, you know, normally we talk about trading, trading statistics. Uh, we talk about uh, mathematics, something like that, formulas, deriving trading strategies. And today it's about charts. It's a little bit strange when it comes to Stefan. I And you know that uh, I'm always a little bit skeptical all around charts, but um, when it comes to echo charts, I change my mind a little bit, and you will learn uh, what echo charts are and how to use them. Anyhow, uh, I forgot something. I forgot already to upload the slides I will do during I speak, because as always, you can find uh, the slides of today's webinar for download in the go to webinar control panel and if you have interest in my excel sheets which i will show later and even today we have excel sheets um just send me an email drop me a note to s.friedrichowski at jfdbank.com um so that's quite easy before i finally start you know the procedure um i have to show up once at least during a webinar the so-called risk, risk disclaimer what's really about here <clears throat> we talk about trading we talk about trading strategies but finally when it comes to your trading of course you do everything on your own and your own responsibility i think that's quite self-explaining but it has to be mentioned at least once during any webinar a little bit more in detail what today's webinar is about. Of course, we start with the Renko chart, as it is. Right away, we go into that. And I can explain and give you some more motivation directly out of the charts. And since you know um, I'm, I'm a physician and I like clear definitions, uh, we will really define what Renko charts and Renko bricks, because that's all about Renko bricks, we will define, and indeed that really helps to understand Renko charts later as well, because there are some details you should know, and there are some, let's call them obstacles, um, when it comes to Renko charts within MT4, um, that has to do with how Renko charts are defined and what indicators uh, which we will use in order to get Renko charts in MT4 what they use and it's a little bit different there are therefore there are some differences and finally we talk about useful settings for renko charts because there is one setting just one but it's similar than with standard charts candlestick charts there you have to decide should i go for a d1 a daily based chart or an h1 hourly based and here it will be the brick size. And it's a little bit similar, but totally different. And then I finally come up with some proposals of how to trade with Renko charts and uh, what you have to know about that. But now let's jump into 
a Renko chart. And on the slide, you have a Renko chart. And of course, you cannot read the time scale uh, on the x axis. And that's good um, because Renko charts don't have a time scale, a real one, or not a time scale which really matters. And if you, in, um, and also you could read it, it would might mislead you because Renko charts are price based. Everything which counts are those bricks, those small candles within the chart. And what you can see here is okay, there are blue and red uh, bricks or candles and nothing else. Honestly, the chart is a euro, Canadian dollar, and I wrote down with a brick size of one bib. Okay, that's an important information. The size of each brick here is exactly one bib. That's interesting. So all the candles, all the bricks are here exactly one candle. And you may think, hey, but there might be a huge candle going up uh, 10 bips in a standard candlestick chart. Okay, if that's the case, that would translate for a Renko chart in 10 blue bricks. Because we have in total a movement 10 bips upwards. And that's what you see here. So all you see is the price move. On what time scale that happens doesn't matter. And if I look to my trades, what, what matters more, price or time? Of course, it's the price and not the time. Only if it comes to, to long-lasting trades, and we may think about uh, swap costs. Um, but normally, I place a trade, I have a stop loss, and I have to take profit. And what matters is, how do I reach that? And is it possible to reach that within a suitable time? And here we have, because we have everything in bricks, we know what kind of movements are possible ups and downs, ups and downs. And even if you look to the structure or the microstructure of the chart, all the movements are much more obvious now. We don't have to interpret um, a chart, long lasting interpretation. No, those one, two, three movements are really obvious in those charts. That makes Renko charts quite interesting. So that's one example of a Renko chart uh, in the Forex market. And now I have another Renko chart here and I have even two pictures. Uh, now it's a, um, it's a picture of the ducks and the brick size because whenever you see a, a Renko chart, you have to ask, hey, what's the size of a brick? Because you can't see it or the, uh, the, the y-axis, uh, at least in this chart, is not visible, but anyhow. So that's a, the typical question you have to ask, hey, what's the size of a brick? And in this case, it's five points for the ducks. And I know what always happens when people look first on Renko charts. Everybody tries to find the same um, patterns within the standard chart, which is an, uh, above here, and the Renko chart below. And the same pattern or the same time point in time. That's always that people are looking, try to figure out, hey, okay, I have this kind of zigzag movement here, and where can I find the same movement in the standard chart? And honestly, that question doesn't matter. And it's important to get that kind of question out of your head. I have illustrated <coughs> the two points which I really can connect within those, that chart. And you see that arrow here um, showing, okay, that point is this one. And you may ask, hey, and what's about the rest here? Yeah, that's um, before. So in total, the history of um, the Renko chart is longer. There is no time wise one-to-one -one translation. 
of course, we can, all the highs and lows, we will find more or less in the Renko chart as well. But it doesn't matter that this peak is maybe that one here, and this peak is now this one. The structure is what really matters and what is important. And just look to the standard chart and try to illustrate for your own what is the structure of that chart. Hmm. That will be a hard job um, to, to interpret here exactly that chart. The below chart, the Renko chart, is definitely much easier. You see exactly the kind of movement in the standard chart. It's really a tough job. So let's define Renko charts or where it comes from. <coughs> as a candlestick uh, charts, they stem from Japan as well. And the Japanese word Renga, which is the origin of Renko charts, Renga means bricks or brick. And that's all what we have to know. The other thing we need to know is that all charts, wherever they, whatever chart you are looking for, candlestick chart, Heiken Yashin charts, or in this case Renku charts, all charts are based originally on tick charts or tick data. And you know, a tick is simply um, um, a trade. It, but maybe not your own trade, any trade is a tick. And that tick generates a price with a timestamp. And that's all what's really important. So the base of everything are tick charts. Same is true for candlestick charts and for Renko charts. And it's important to have that in mind any time. Now, if we go for candlestick charts, then a candlestick chart is nothing else than just a representation of a time unit by four numbers, open, high, low, and close. So what really what we are doing, or MT4 is doing to, to make a, a fast visible an H1 candle, okay, that's quite easy. We look, let's say, for the candle at uh, 2 p.m. Then we look for all the ticks between 2 and 3 p.m. The first one within that time interval is the open. The last one is the close. The highest price is a high and the lowest price is a low. Hey, that's an H1 candle. That's all what is an H1 candle. You don't know when that high or when that low has been, but at least you know the price. So from a more mathematical point of view, a candlestick chart is um, something like, like you, you zip a file, you, you compress data, because you may have um, 20,000 ticks and, and now you transfer those 20,000 ticks in four numbers. That's a huge compression level. But that's good to, to, to have that in mind. It's nothing else than just represent the one hour 60,000 or 40,000 or whatever number ticks into four numbers. So it's data reduction, but with a loss because we, we lose details. But that's okay if you know that. Renko charts, on the other hand, are a little bit similar, but the only thing which matters here is the price itself. <clears throat> so wherever we start and we set a brick size of two bips, then we have to wait to draw that candle until we first have either a movement to the upside of brick size, let's say two, two bips, or to the downside, two bips. And finally, if a new tick hits that distance to the up or to the low, to, um, upwards or um, downside, then we have a new brick. And that's all. 
So if the price move has exceeded a certain threshold, then we have a new candle or a new brick. So candlestick charts are time-based and Renko charts are price-based. Honestly, yes, both matters. But if I have to vote for one, then I would always go for the price and not for the time. <coughs> because we talk about trading and the price move is always more important than the time move. <coughs> Sorry for that. <coughs> Maybe I have to mute my microphone for a second. So, yeah, I'm back again. And I want to, to um, illustrate that, how to generate a Renko chart by your own or um, Renko data. And as I mentioned, uh, we need to have um, price data on a tick-based level because it's, finally it's the only thing you can take in order to have real uh, Renko charts. You need tick data. So two possibilities I will show you here how to get tick data. And later you will see we do the same uh, just by indicators in MT4 directly. So you don't have to do it really, but I want to show you at least once the procedure because you can learn a little bit more about uh, rank charts um, just with that uh, Excel sheet. So one possibility is to get tick data at uh, Dukas Copy. You can get their M1, D1, uh, H1 data as well, but also ticks. And the other one is an automated process uh, with a Python script. I will not go into the details, but uh, I know that some people will like it uh, to see that this, this is um, possible uh, as well. I admit already that there are some bugs within uh, what I show you, um, but at least for the tick data download it's really suitable um, that I can tell you. It's not from, from my end, I have not uh, coded uh, the, those Python scripts, but uh, I will show you how to use them. So one possibility is um, simply that we go for uh, Dukas copy here and all we would have to do here is uh, we go for tick data and then you see you can always only download one day simultaneously um, and you can choose a date and then pressing download and then you have them. But you would have to do that job uh, day by day. So that's the one possibility. The other one is a quite cool and you uh, have seen already um, the link within my slides. Uh, it's going here to GitHub and then you can read that if you are interested in Python scripts, uh, how to download and how to use. Uh, it's quite easy and I will at least demonstrate uh, that kind of process and um, we can, I can show you that uh, within my terminal window here and all I have to do is uh, to have um, to type, for example, Duca Euro US dollar means I want to download um, Euro US dollar, then for whatever reason, minus T um, one, and then it's just the start date uh, from when onwards I want to have the data. I can use an end date as well. And now it's downloading Monday, Tuesday, and yesterday, Wednesday. Um, so, and that is all. And then I have the data. Just that you know, it's quite easy to do that. And um, then you have those tick data. We will go now for already downloaded tick data um, from one day. In, in this case, it's Monday. Um, I will show you how to create out of tick data a Renko chart or Renko data. The good thing. Finally, you don't have to do that kind of job. And the other good thing is you can learn a little bit about the characteristics of uh, Renko charts itself. And what you see here already is you see, okay, uh, there's a timestamp um, of uh, the data, an ask price, a bid price, um, and then already the created Renko ones. But let me show you what's here. So. 
you have to start. So I start with what I have. And I only go here for bit levels. And then the only thing I wait here is until the current price is at least away the brick size level. That's all I ask. And in case yes, I will write a new number here. And later you will see uh, indeed it happens. That's the way you create those brick levels. But now let me show you already a few more things here within the two charts within the Excel sheet. The lower end of my Excel sheet or the, the lower chart, <clears throat> that is a real tick chart versus time. In the upper chart, I have plotted the Renko levels indeed here versus time, which we later learn is not the right thing. We just we we just draw them as they are, not versus time. <clears throat> and you see here I have a brick size level of two bips, and in total I have here a counter. We get for one day to in this case two hundred sixty six candles. Hey, that's a quite huge compression as well. Um, this Excel sheet here has um, close to 90,000 uh, ticks, which is about one tick per second, roundabout. And with a tick, uh, a brick size of two bips, we can reduce the number of data <coughs> to 266. That's good to know that we have a quite huge compression here as well. So that's another interesting thing about um, Renko charts, but same is true for candlestick charts as well, because we can use that as a reduction of data. And you see exactly what happens here in the beginning of the first six hours of the day, you don't see much moves. <laughs> of course, it's the night. And exactly that is one reason for going for uh, brick um, for Renko charts. We can reduce noise and those boring periods within the day will be reduced to a few um, candles. That's good if we have that kind of reduction. Because if nothing happens, hey, why should I look to a more or less horizontal line? I agree. Right now, we have in my chart still a quite horizontal line. But that will be reduced uh, in the next step. Let me let me increase the brick size level because then you can see we get that kind of smoothing of <clears throat> the graph. And that's another really good thing. Any chart smooths by its own just by going for higher brick levels. Now we are at four bips for a brick and already we only have uh, close to 80 um, candles anymore. So you can see the kind of reduction which happens here. Finally, <clears throat> if I want to plot that chart correctly as a Renko chart, let me take the data and uh, go to a new sheet here and uh, then um, paste it here. It's only taking me a few steps and then you will see exactly uh, what I would like to achieve. Uh, we have to sort the data um, a long time. And now we have all the uh, real bricks and then we can plot them. And that what comes now is a real Renko chart, but illustrated as lines, not as bricks, but that's a reduced chart. And now we have that clear structure again. Okay, maybe the Monday was not the best example because on Monday um, this week, uh, the first couple of hours, nothing happened. The last couple of hours, nothing happened. <clears throat> and in between, it was more or less a move to the south. But that kind of structure is much better and much more informative than 
um, looking to a standard chart. So that's a cool thing about Renko charts. And now you see exactly what it means going with brick sizes. And the only thing is how big that move should be in order to draw a new candle. And that's easy. That's good to know. Of course, we want to see Renko charts as in my introduction part directly in the MT4. And it's quite easy to do that. I will show you in a minute two indicators. One is called Renko underscore charts. Uh, and that's exactly the search pattern you might use for Google. Uh, may, maybe you, you write Renko charts, uh, Renko underscore charts MT4, and then you will find uh, that indicator in the web as well. That one is really easy to use. Um, I mentioned here already, here the brick size is given in points, not in bips. What does it mean, points? In this case, um, it's always the last uh, digits. So for example, Euro, US dollar, you know, we have five digits after the comma, and the last digit is one, two, three, and the second last digit would be 10, 20, and so on. In this case, for DAX, the meaning of point is really different because one point in the language of that indicator is a point of one move. That's one point. <clears throat> so we need 100 points if we want to have what I would call a point, one point in the real chart. The disadvantage of that indicator is that you still have a time axis and that one is wrong. But once again, the time axis is anyhow totally meaningless. and You even don't have to care. We want to look for price movement and nothing else. So in principle, yeah, it's still in the chart, but it's not the right one. So don't uh, be misled by that uh, axis. The other indicator is called Renko Live Chart underscore V600 underscore Indy. And that one is a quite tricky one because it you you throw it on a standard chart, <clears throat> but then that indicator creates a so-called offline chart, and that one you have to open. And now um, for that indicator, the brick size is given in bips, okay? But the other advantage because we get a new real chart, and now the time axis is at least correctly correctly labeled, but as I told you. Time access doesn't matter really. The other good thing here is that you can use standard indicators within the chart as well. So you can take that Renko chart and use EMAs, use RSI, use whatever. So you can use the standard set of indicators uh, for your analysis within that offline chart. Now that's really cool. Normally, and that's true for all um, kind of indicator like a generation process of Renko charts in MT4, um, you run those on M1 charts. As I mentioned, the real source for a Renko chart would be tick data. And if you use the second one here, from the moment you throw that on the chart, then the offline chart is indeed actualized correctly. But all the history is generated out of M1 chart, uh, M1 candles. And that's not really correct. Think about an M1 candle, a huge doji-like M1 candle, close and open, more or less same level. But in between, we have a jump 10 bips upwards and 10 bips to the, uh, to the south. Then all the tools here would not generate um, any bricks, which is not correct because we know the price has been up and down. <clears throat> Therefore, always go for the lowest uh, time frame and uh, possible, and then um, have that in mind. Honestly, that only matters if you have small brick sizes. If you have a brick size of a few bips, um, then the number of mistakes in the charts are really uh, quite rare. So. Um, if you want to have longer history within that chart, sometimes you have to go to M5 or even M15 um, um, chart. 
because otherwise the history is not long enough. You will see that. And you will see it now. Let's go practical here directly into the how to generate a rank or chart. So, of course, I have my indicators already uh, up and running here on, um, on the navigator. And uh, maybe let's, let's go for uh, Euro uh, New Zealand dollar. And let me get rid of uh, the ATR within my chart here. And then we can use that one for generating Renko charts. So all we have to do is we throw the indicator on the chart as always. But now <clears throat> a few tricky things. Please don't forget to allow import of DLLs. If you forget that, the indicator will not work. And the other thing, um, in this case, it doesn't matter, use the chart M1. I forgot that, I will change it after afterwards so let's go back for m1 because that's where you should start always and here we are and then what i would always recommend don't try to get the corresponding points within the two charts just do the following and then you are exactly here in this case um the brick size is uh, 40 points, which is four bips. And once again, isn't that chart really brilliant? Everything is much more obvious. Resistant lines, support lines. It's really easy to draw, uh, to draw those lines. And all the movements, which typically are called one, two, three movements, hey, they can be labeled here quite easy that's that is really good so that's the one indicator and here indeed you can change to other time frames and um, um, finally if you uh, wait uh, then now those should not be that uh, too different but it's okay so start with them one if you go there that's a perfect hit the other one we can throw here as well. So here it's really important. If you don't are, if you are not on M1, you will get an error. You have to import uh, to allow import of DLLs, otherwise the indicator is not working. And now we have here the possibility to enter the Renko box size, and you get already an indication that there will be an offline uh, chart under the name seven it's not really a seven minute uh, time frame it's only giving the name seven okay pressing yes and we are here and where's the chart hmm. the chart is here there are the offline charts and now we have to go to, to look for euro new zealand dollar m7 that was indicated in the indicator and that's the one we have to open and here we are, we have our Renko chart. That it's, this one is really a Renko chart. Um, you will see in a second. And here we are. And as you can see, um, I try to illustrate that a little bit here. Uh, they look pretty much the same um, because I use the same brick size. They are based on the same <clears throat> data source and therefore they should indeed look uh, the same. Now, the x axis here is indeed correct um, so the time axis is not anymore equidistant it's labeled correctly but anyhow it doesn't matter we need to have a look to the moves and nothing else and that's what Renko charts are about price moves that's what really counts so that's the kind how you generate those kind of charts it's easy to do and you can, in this case, you can even go for an indicator like in moving average and uh, put that one here as well or any other indicator. So that might help you in your own chart analysis. That's the way you can generate. I will show you another a good example in a few minutes. 
There is always one question when it comes to Renko charts. What is a useful, what is a suitable brick size? Because that number we have to press into any indicator. <coughs> so that's a good question. And there is no holy grail answer on that. But here are three variants you might go for. And there's one favorite. That's the one I go for. Of course, you can use a fixed number in BIPs. Like, you always go for 5 BIP brick size. So then all your charts will be 5 bricks, uh, five BIPs bricks. Of course, you can do that. Other people do something different. They use an ATR from a higher time frame. Let's even go for a D1 time frame. Let's look for the ATR. And maybe the ATR on that time frame is, I don't know, 30 BIPs. And then we say, okay, we always go for one tenth of the daily ATR. The good thing, if you do that, then you imply the volatility into your um, Renko chart. The downside is <clears throat> you have to do that every day with a different brick size. But it's not that bad idea to have um, the overall volatility within your chart itself. <clears throat> My favorite is different. My favorite is use euro-based brick sizes. That sounds strange. But it's a little bit more from a trading perspective. If I think about my own trades, okay, I have a typical trading volume, so the lot size of any trade. Let's assume that is 0.01, nothing else. And for DAX, I would trade 0.1 because that is a minimum lot size for DAX. So we have a typical lot size because that lot size we will use later for trades as well. Maybe you have different one, 0 0.02, 0 0.1, even one lot, 10 lot, whatever. But now, let's go for our typical trading volume. Let's go for a typical euro value, which is good for us, for our trades. <coughs> and for example, for those minimum volume trades, the one euro size might be a good idea. So to think about, okay, I want to place my stop loss with one euro, two euros, maybe it was eight euros. That would translate simply in eight bricks. So I can do that directly in the chart. Hey, that's that's cool. We don't have to do later any more calculations when we um, move our stop loss or when we place our stop loss. We just have to count bricks, which is uh, yeah quite easy. So to have the brick size in euro that has even another big advantage and the other big advantage is you can compare different symbols that's always tricky think about you have a chart with euro us dollar and a chart with a euro japanese yen okay that's already the numbers are totally different yens are 100 something um, euro us dollar one point something how to really compare the two charts because they are always out of scale. Um, so you really cannot translate directly any move in the one chart to the other chart. If each candle has a defined size in euros, <laughs> then that kind of comparison is really easy because it's just counting bricks and that's an easy job. So different symbols, they get much more comparable to each other. So we can really look from the one to the other and see where do I have the real bigger advantage in euros? Because finally what counts is euros or US dollar or Swiss franc, but the currency and not... Mm, yeah, some some candles in, in, in um, within the chart. So that's good to use 
you will waste brick sizes. If you need, let's say, some help uh, to translate um, price moves into those values which are important for um, for for the indicators, like give me points or in bips, I have created a quite small Excel sheet uh, where you can. Um, put the numbers in like lot size uh, or euro value and then even if you want to trade US dollar Japanese yen what you need to know is the exchange rate euro Japanese yen at least if your account is in euro then this is what really matters for you so we need that exchange rate and then we get the values in points um, for the one indicator or in BIPs for the other indicator um, or if the pure price difference it's uh, the first number here. So that is a, a nice tool to translate um, Euro, Euro numbers with typical lot sizes of your own trading <clears throat> into suitable brick sizes. And then we can create a really quite cool chart. Let me illustrate that. And I have prepared the chart already. Um, it's not a single chart, it's um, a portfolio of charts. And I have created a Renko uh, profile. And within that Renko profile, we have all our trades, uh, all our charts now in Renko behavior and since I have mentioned the standard chart is not important we have to focus ourselves just on the Renko's and nothing else and then this is a new picture. I have done here already that kind of step that I use the right brick sizes for any um, symbol. So for example Euro British pound now the brick size is 89 points, uh, whereas for Euro Japanese yen the brick size is 120 points. But all the bricks here are now one euro level. So if you think about trade, let's say um, we want to place an order here on that level and Maybe we want to trade a breakout scenario or something like that. And we want to place stop loss somewhere here. Okay, then we know exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is 10 euro. So the trade would have a risk if you trade that was 0.01 lot with exactly 10 euro stop loss level. Hey, we can see that now within the chart and if you have other favorite numbers for typical stop losses for given lot sizes you can change the brick sizes and then you have that number within the chart and then you might say okay hmm, no 10 euro for that trade that's too much for me whatever and you might use different numbers and then you would say okay no that kind of breakout rate I don't want to go for that I will wait for another uh, opportunities so that's a cool aspect of how to use Renko charts because they are now inherently scaled because every brick here if you use a setting like translate a one euro um, into bips for a typical lot size then you have all the charts in the same scale and that's really good good to know so that's my favorite when it comes to Renko charts but still we have one open question and that is how to trade them and let me guide you a little bit through but I mentioned a complete website here later uh, where you can find hundreds of uh, additional tips of how to trade Renko charts but let's really start from the uh, from the very beginning what you might do first like with other charts is you do a standard chart analysis you might look for support and resistant lines and the good thing is they are much more obvious 
in those charts. I will illustrate again in the chart um, in a minute. You will see that trends become more clear. And those tools you might use for your um, standard uh, technical analysis, like one, two, three uh, movements, even those, they, they really um, are obvious directly in the chart. You can see and use it for breakout strategies, or you do this uh, more or less opposite uh, reversal strategies. <clears throat> and you will find uh, other good ideas here on the website if you like. One remark here already when it comes to stop loss placement, and I will redo the same I have already done in the chart uh, a minute ago. Uh, once again, to 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 emphasize uh, that attention here, we want to place a stop loss. Then think about because of the nature of bricks. Even if there is, um, if you want to place a stop loss, it's always plus one brick. Keep that in mind because there might have been prices already a little bit below a brick, but not below enough to create a new brick. I will go back to my chart, and you see, I would not place a stop loss directly here at that level. Because at least in the past, there might have been already prices a little bit below, but not below enough to create a new red brick there. So I would place a stop loss level always plus one brick. And that would be here. But now let's think about we're doing chart, oops, uh, chart analysis. Uh, let me enlarge this one here. And now you see the structure of a trend and you see my mouse movement becomes extremely obvious. That was a really good downtrend in zigzag moves, almost like in a textbook. Okay, a few small deviations, but that's a cool thing that you can see those train trends directly into the chart and you can directly see the trend reversal within the chart as well. Renko charts are really trend behavior charts. They, they, they really uh, make it quite obvious. So that's seeing the trends within the chart is really easy and you may see now here, what a wonderful trend to the south in Euro, British pound. That's really a wonderful um, scenario. You might use that chart and say, okay, I want to wait for a pushback to that level. Then I would place a sell limit order at that point and I could use a stop loss here, one brick plus, which would be here. And I see already, okay, one, two, look, that's seven bricks. So seven euros stop loss distance for a 0.01 uh, trade. All those things hmm, you see directly. And that's the cool thing about Renko charts. It makes things much easier than with standard charts. Good. I hope I, I get you a little bit curious about uh, Renko charts because that is already bringing me to my summary. What you have always to keep in mind, Renko charts are price-based. Price movements is the only thing which matters and counts when it comes to Renko charts. Candlestick charts are time-based. They reduce one dollar to four numbers, open, high, low, close, and illustrate those four numbers in a candle. Renko charts illustrate everything with price moves, with um, bricks, in this case, up and down bricks. 
if you do, if you have that kind of chart, then you can do a chart analysis uh, much easier. It's really getting easy. That, that's cool. All the no noise and extremely trendless faces, they simply vanish because if you have, for example, a brick size of five pips, uh, yeah, they will be condensed to one brick and all the small ups and downs you will not see anymore because there's no new candle. But I have to admit, to have really, you have to get used to those charts. I repeat my song. I know that everybody is doing the same when it comes first to Renko charts, trying to find the correlation, the correspondent highs and lows in the normal chart and the Renko chart. That's a bad idea to to look for those. Just concentrate on the chart itself and do your analysis. And don't try to, to find the corresponding points within the standard chart. That's not the idea of Renko charts to compare them with the standard charts. It's the idea to get a clear and structured view on trend behavior, resistant lines, support lines, and that's what's good about Renko charts because it's that's that easy and that obvious. If you have any further questions or any question at all, still uh, use the opportunity to drop me a line at s.friedrichowski at jfgbank.com. Um, of course, I will help you out uh, as far as I can. And uh, if you have interest in any slides or forgotten, forgotten to download here, um, no problem. Just send me a note and uh, even the Excel sheets you can have. And if you don't find the Renko indicators in the internet, uh, I will make sure that you get them as well. That's for now. I hope you see you again in October for the next webinar. I still don't know exactly the topic where we'll have in October, but let's see. I will find a good one, be sure. And have a good time, have a good evening, and a good rest of that week here. Bye-bye, and see you again.